cameras, one for the audience and one uh, for the speaker, and then somebody with the microphone uh, moving the, yeah, for whoever asks. And this actually helps uh, the people, you know, uh, that couldn't make it to Debian to, uh, to, the, to DevConf to actually yeah. follow the talk. And usually they, they quite appreciate it. Yeah. So, yeah. And the video team provide training, so there's no requirement at all to have video oh. experience or um, camera experience, anything like that. You can just say it's sounds something that sounds fun to do. And you also get a special yellow t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a question in the audience, or in the participants, rather, over here. Or, yeah. or in, in, intervention from, the, from, a from someone. Yeah. Yeah, no. Microphone, please. I know I think right. it's, it's not really necessary for this session necessarily, but let's get into the habit of using the microphone correctly. Yeah, hi. Uh, Ron, I, my name is uh, Oliver. Uh, right, so... Um, this is uh, more of an inquiry uh, about, not specifically video, but i kind of interested in photography uh, stills. And while um, uh, I see the hard efforts of the video team, I'm uh, not sure. Is there really like photo <laughs> So maybe if we hand the microphone to the person sitting at the front yeah. of the room. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'm Igars, um, basically the photo team. <laughs> oh, the, in, the current, well, yeah, but I think you can probably take more members. Exactly, yeah. Uh, I've been running around and taking pictures of everything, and so most of, the, most of the time I end up missing most of the talks. So if somebody else would take up some of the slack and uh, have more pictures taken, that, that, would, that would improve the coverage, definitely, and uh, reduce the stress. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how, how do you plan to publish the, the photos and so forth? Uh, well, yeah, the photos are basically all, from the previous day already published in my uh, Google Plus stream and I'm uh, tweeting them and posting to IRC and stuff like that. And they'll, they'll be promoted through more official channels later on as well, especially when they're finished for all of that. As, as far how to cooperate ex explicitly with the, with the uh, other photographers taking, taking pictures, uh, that specific point has not been worked upon yet before, so yeah, that's a very open area of, co uh, of co coordination now. Have you uh, been involved as a photographer uh, of DEFCON for several editions of DEFCON? For uh, all the ones that I've been to. <laughs> <laughs> Which is how many years, approximately? Uh, since Oslo? Yeah. I think that's DevCon 4. Os Oslo Five. was 2003. Three? Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, for a long time. <laughs> but yeah, there's, uh, there's plenty of... Uh, mm, Plenty of moments to take and not enough uh, eyes to see them and not enough cameras to take them. Uh, maybe it's not the key focus of the, of the conference, but it helps for people to, outside the conference to see what's, what's happening be, uh, where the cameras don't have the coverage, the video cameras don't have the coverage, and also see some, some more details, some more insights as well. So you mentioned you have been involved uh, or attending some DevConf. Um, have there like been uh, differences in uh, in the photography aspects, so to speak? L like, or have you? Uh, you mentioned you were um, more or less the only photographer uh, here, right? At this DevConf is this kind of. Are you used to this, or have it like? Just give a little historic perspective, basically. Well, uh, back to the, the topic of this, <laughs> of uh, encouraging volunteers. Um, when, I, when I started uh, and I came to Debian, came to DebConf, uh, I'm not a great coder, <laughs> let's just say it like that. I'm much better at taking photos and uh, uh, what, what, I, what, I, what I try to focus on at DebConf is try to provide as best photo coverage 
so that the rest of the, of the participants don't feel the need to bring their cameras and take pictures so that they can focus more on the coding and I feel that uh, by this way I, I can provide more overall code impact than by coding myself. And so that's, that, that's why I became involved. So uh, one of the ways that uh, people can get involved and volunteer for DevConf as well is to see uh, what, people, uh, what, coder, what people in DevConf that would like to be coding what are they doing instead of coding? And maybe you can help them reduce that non-productive time and help with that. I found the, the photography niche, maybe there is some other things that are not covered and you know, maybe somebody else can, can find something else. Yeah, so I mean a lot of the, most of the volunteer jobs during DevCon are non-technical ones. There are in fact some technical things that need help as well. Um, if you are sitting in this room but really looking for a new technical project then there are things like helping with the um, improving the conference management system um, where there's actually been some coding done during this week to um, fix a couple of things even um, the when they were noticed during DevCon. But most of the roles are non-technical things. I mean other things you can see again if you walk around the conference, you'll see people doing different things, like, for example, the front desk. Um, I th at the moment, the front desk actually seems to have already found a lot of volunteers uh, by recruiting people as they arrived. So I don't know if they heavily need people or not, but certainly um, that's something that people, some people may be interested in if, they've, if they're more. Uh, he wants to say something. Just or ready to come in and give two, three minutes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Great. Um, there are lots of things where just, in a lot, another point about the volunteering during DevConf is just that a lot of times there's, you can spot something needs done. Um, or, or in fact some local team person f uh, may just be looking for someone to help do something boring like carry some stuff around. And obviously most people are kind of willing to do that, but again, it's good if there's some people who are really actively kind of looking out for little instances where they can help and just make sure everything works smoothly. I think there will still be some extra volunteers possibly wanted for things like um, helping get people to the right place on the day trip, this kind of thing as well. Um, and, and the cheese and wine party as well. Yeah, the cheese and wine party should, should I expect, still needs volunteers. That's um, another important event in the DevConf calendar. Can we pass the microphone over here then for, to hear something about front desk work? So front desk is a very easy place to volunteer. Um, we usually have one person who has access to the, the internal system where you have to uh, tick off that people have registered, but the main thing we need help with is just pulling out the right t-shirt size, pulling up the person's badge. Um, we've kind of got an assembly line going for that. Um, you also get people wandering up just looking for help, um, like where do I find the room for this session or um, what's coming up on the schedule. So we have like a printed piece there. So a lot of it, the rest of it's just kind of pointing people in the right direction. That's pretty much it. So out of the people, well, if anyone want to ask a question back about that or are you kind of happy? Maybe you can repeat the question as well on the microphone. Uh, he's asking, how did I get involved in Front Desk? Um, I'm actually one of the local organizers for this year, so that's why I'm helping out. But there's other folks who just wandered up and started volunteering. So I, th I think that's, we can probably let you get back if, you're, if you want. But um, out of the people in this room, are there people who, are gen who as the kind of in th in th theoretical purpose of this session should be, are genuinely looking for something to do? Um, or are you, is, are people too scared to uh, raise, raise their hand and admit that? I see some new phrases to me, but I don't know whether you're just um, using the room as somewhere convenient to IRC from, or whether you <laughs> actually would like to find a, a, some volunteer thing to do. Um, if there's anyone in particular, then we can probably find you something, that's all. Um, but if you prefer to lurk, that's also fine. Is anyone raising their hand? Apparently not. So for the peop other people, I see quite, since I see quite a lot of people in the room who are, I think, actually have been around in DevConf and in Debian for some time, um, while leaving open the option for anyone to jump up and say, I really need to find something to fill my time on Tuesday afternoon, or whatever it happens to be, 
Um, I was going to say a little bit about uh, the fact that some of the people in the room I know are, again, long-term DevConf participants and may have helped to lesser or greater degrees at different individual DevConfs. But as well as helping at the DevConfs, we are also always looking for people to get involved more with the longer-term um, year-to-year DevConf processes. Although clearly a lot of the work needs to be done by people who are local um, to actually be able to go and um, speak face-to-face -face with venue managers or this kind of thing, there's a lot of stuff in DevConf that happens that makes the conference a success when it happens, but is done in advance remotely. Um, this, is that, does, talk, can you tell me when it's big enough to actually read anything? I don't know how bad or good people's eyesight are. Is, is that legible? Okay. So, I mean, this is a page in the DevConf wiki uh, with the imaginative title of Jobs. Um, and this just has a load of different ways people can help on different things. Again, some of these are listed as things that are better done locally, although even within those areas, it's actually good if people from who've got longer-term DevConf experience also get involved to give advice and help do things. Um, that's things like the venue arrangements, um, helping people arrange that... Or, get travel information, helping people get visas if they're coming to some um, country that requires it. Um, there's a lot of things actually where we, we really don't have enough volunteers at the moment for some of these boring tasks. I say boring, but I'm sure they are very, very interesting if you can uh, approach them in the right manner. Um, so Martin was uh, saying that he's been doing, for example, some of the kind of accounting um, for DebConf. And that's the kind of thing where it's really vital to have it happen, but it's hard often in a out of the set of people who are just coming to a DevConf say, it's hard to find, find people who are, have the right experience and, the right, um, and are willing to actually spend time to do that, even though clearly it's completely vital that we have a, a good set of accounts to show where the money's actually gone at the end of the conference. Um, the same, I, I, think at this, I don't think actually this year we, have a, a, we have managed to get a real volunteer to do kind of invent specifically to do inventory tracking, for example. That just means keeping track of all the equipment that we put into the, into the building, um, lots of which comes for, is lent from indip, individual people or comes from some standard Debian equipment used from year to year. Um, that's an example. It's really good to have... Some years we've had someone who focused on that and made sure everything was labelled and listed and documented, and then at the end of the conference it's then very easy to get it all back to the right place. In the years when that doesn't happen, you suddenly find that three years later you're still trying to get the power strip back to someone or whatever it happens to be. Um, conference volunteers stuff is what I was talking about to start with, but again, at the moment we again kind of don't have enough people. Well, we tend to get people to do the individual jobs. The task of coordinating those people tends just to fall back on the local team people, so here it kind of falls back on maybe Steve and Patty, um, but they obviously actually have a lot of other things that they, sh they have need to think about during the conference period. So again, if, if we have anyone who's interested in just helping to coordinate other volunteers, that's also something that we could really do with uh, more help on. Um, this year we don't have a specific De Debian Day or Open Day from the conference, but again, um, in some years, someone has taken, has taken that of saying, well, how can we really try to interact with the local community in the place where we're holding the conference? And maybe have a day where, where the talks that are scheduled that, that day are more, tar more ones that are more, uh, more understandable from people from outside the project, more of general interest to people interested in free software. Um, but again, it's something that it kind of, when it's happened in the past, it's mostly fallen back on the local team people to do it, but they have so many other priorities in the period leading up to DevConf that it's, if we're going to have it, it's something that could really do with someone who wants to push that from year to year, um, maybe who's, even if they're remote. Um, the day trip and conference dinner tend to be actually something that's quite fun for the locals to organize, but they still always need help to actually make the practicalities work. And again, just someone who's willing to Equally, in the period leading up to the conference, it's good to have someone who's interested in those topics um, and can make suggestions, do research, check prices, whatever is needed. Um, then a lot of the other areas of DevConf organization, you don't even need to have any particular 
there doesn't need to be any particular local work done, but it's something that needs to happen. And again, these are the kind of things where it's, it really is a big help if we can get people who want to help in these areas and push them, again, to relieve the pressure from the local organizers a bit. So one of the biggest areas there, again, I don't know if anyone in this here has, who's not already helping with it, has experience in the area, but you may have noticed that DevConf doesn't have a compulsory registration fee that we pay for food and accommodation for a lot of participants, that we pay travel for some number of participants. And obviously, to make that possible, we need to do a lot of fundraising. Um, again, in Debian in general, most people are not experts in fundraising. A lot of people find it something that's kind of scary or doesn't sound at all um, interesting to do because it's basically hassling people about giving you money, which is not really the, well, is, is a productive thing to do, but not the most relaxing way to spend your time. Um, but again, we, we're always, every year we're short on people to help in that area. And I'm sure there, I don't, know, I don't know about people in this room, but I'm sure maybe you know someone else in Debian or someone else at DebConf who you think would have an aptitude for that and could help out there. Um, again, treasury, accounting, so on. We have some, some people who do a little bit, but we, can always, we could do with a lot more help there. I, I, I think uh, more, people, more hands would be useful. Um, Again, another area, most, most people in DebConf are not at all expert on dealing with media things. Um, we could do with, if, the, if you or know, if you are, have experience at doing things with media, or as in dealing with press, or if you know someone else who is, even if they're not really involved with Debian at the moment, then maybe that's a good way to get them to make a contribution. Um, because, again, it's... It's not, while it's not strictly vital, it's really a good thing if we can have some um, local coverage or some kind of international coverage to show that Debian is having a conference and is doing useful things. Um, maybe a few, again, there are more technical ways, again, to help remotely, things like helping design websites, um, helping with uh, in, uh, um, admin and infrastructure for various servers that we have. Uh, I think I mentioned video team already. Uh, one task that will be coming up imminently and is again not a is something that often gets left behind a bit is the production of a final report for the conference uh, basically that's just a, a collection of articles about different aspects of the conference plus some kind of um, budget information and other more numerical stuff about what's happened um, so again we're always looking for people who can volunteer to write one or two articles there maybe on um, just does Martin wants to say something? Well, that's fine. If we, if we have the microphone. <coughs> Sorry. Um, about the final report, there isn't really like, uh, there are a couple of articles that have to be written, but what is also incredibly useful is if you feel super happy about a day and you just want to write you know, a paragraph or three sentences about um, what you experienced on that day and how it really helped you contribute to Debian or whether you forged friendships and whatever, write that and send it to us or commit it directly. I mean, maybe it's not going to end up in the final report. Maybe it's going to end up in another final report in the future years, a quote or in the sponsorship brochure. But materials like this coming from attendees is very, very helpful. And that applies to photos as well, which I guess is taking care of. But some people also are, are doing photos, and sometimes they are just mm -hmm. shots that are too good to pass up the opportunity. Yeah. So I mean, then coming again, coming just down the list, there's a lot of job, different jobs to do with talks. In the conference, in practical terms, uh, I don't know exactly, I, I don't actually know how it's being coordinated this year. I don't know if Martin knows or someone else um, about the kind of talk master stuff. Are we, is, do you know it? Does anyone know what's happening? Video team? So over the last uh, few days, we've been short quite dramatically of uh, people on the video team. Um, ideally, there wants to be somebody to look after each talk, uh, let somebody know at the start how long they've got, warn people when they've got 10 minutes, five minutes to go, uh, introduce the talks. Um, this year, video team seems to be doing that to an extent. So please let yourself be known if, you, you know, if you're just sitting in a conference mm -hmm and you can spend five, five minutes in a room with us at the start and at the end of the, of the talk, 
volunteer just for that talk. Yeah. Um, we could always do with the help. Um, yeah, and that's, I mean, the, you could just go to talks you wanted to go to anyway. So. Yeah, the two guys on cameras literally didn't know they were on cameras until they walked into the room and just said, I can help, and we said, yeah. So, uh, yeah. thank you. Then at a wider level of talk stuff, um, there's even during the conference period, there's a need for kind of people who are checking about talk scheduling, which can mean um, scheduling new events, but it also includes, again, it's, it's very useful if someone actually checks whether the people who are speakers have genuinely turned up to the conference and whether they are awake that particular day, for example. Um, we have had some problems before where we had to try and drag speakers out of bed uh, 10 minutes after their talk started, which is not really ideal. Um, and again, in the, in the period leading up to the conference, more than just now, but it's something you could volunteer for now and be involved with in future years, there's the need for people who look at the talk submissions we've got and do the kind of filtering and, and scheduling of the main program to say, what, what do we actually want to include in the schedule for the next year's conference? Um, and also there, there's a space to go out and actively encourage a few people where, where it seems some, there's, maybe there's a topic that seems to be particularly relevant in Debian at the time and we can actually go out and reach out to someone to try and persuade them to give a talk on that or again to get people who are high profile within Debian in particular key roles to actively encourage them to um, agree some kind of talk idea that would be good for everyone to have the time to listen to and to discuss. Um, again Again, in terms of filtering or ranking and so on, there's the need for people who would volunteer to help with allocating who actually is eligible for um, the different kinds of sponsorship and bursaries we give. Um, obviously, for that, it's good if you've been maybe if you've been involved in Debbie in a few years already, so that you have some idea who people are. Just to I mean, a lot of the information that you should be able to get by just searching for people but obviously it's a lot quicker to do it if you have some idea who they are and does what they're saying about their plans for Deb, Deb Conference on make sense. Um, again, it's, it's, it's something that actually has some kind of um, power or influence, but it's not something that's necessarily attractive to everyone to, to, to spend the time to do. But clearly these are all jobs that we really need some, to, they need to happen to make the conference work well. Um, Again, during the, both in advance of the conference and during the conference, again, we need people who will do things like um, allocate the rooms and the accommodation and, ma again, make sure who hasn't actually turned up. Should we, is there some problem that means we need to move people around, this kind of thing. Again, often we'll get a few, some attendees who need to cancel at the last moment and other people who turn up with three extra family members they hadn't expected to bring and we suddenly we need to find some solution of how, this, how all these things work. Each of, these, each of these roles doesn't necessarily need to be time consuming, but it does become too much if you have one, a couple of people trying to do too many of these things at once. So um, for many of these jobs, the best is if there's really one person who can just take, take a particular role and just be the, be the known contact for attendees for that area. Um, and just, con just, again, enjoy the conference as normal, but when there's an issue in that particular topic, they can deal with it calmly because they're not already being um, busy with 20 other jobs as well. Um, and again, on technical things, we, would, we could do with more people to help with the administration of various um, the websites and so on to do with DebConf, and also for uh, things to do with the DebConf email lists. In fact, for quite a lot of stuff to do with the websites and email lists, there's been a, a pl an agreed agreement since a couple of years ago that we would do a migration of these from the current um, debconf.org infrastructure onto more standard Debian infrastructure. But again, we need some people to actually um, take that and do the work there, um, which is, again, it's obviously easier if it's people, it's easier in a way if it's people who are already familiar with the relevant infrastructure, but it can also be a way for someone new to the project to get familiar with the infrastructure Generally, in, De in DebConf, as in the rest of Debian, if you take any of these kind of jobs, of course, it's, uh, you, you meet the other people, you can learn how things work in the area, learn some technical things, get some... Uh, just um, Normally, people find that if they start doing one thing, it's, it's easy to expand into doing others later. Um, 
I don't know, again, some of the people here who are new faces, maybe it's, they're still looking for something to do within Debian in general, I'm not sure. Um, I, I don't really want to say a lot more for myself, but I don't, does some people have other points or questions? Um, well, I, I was just going to add a little bit to what you yeah. just said, um, and specifically in regards of the future. Um, I mean, we are at this conference right now, and it's, as you said, people are, who are already helping are probably like too stressed to actually be able to manage volunteers. So that is an important aspect to keep in mind, um, and that goes very well with the, with the uh, spirit of the conference itself which we like to call an unconference every now and then. So it's really your conference. If you want to do something, just do it. Mm -hmm. And generally that works um, until somebody of us slaps you because you've clearly done something wrong. But uh, you, know, the, you have to do a lot of things wrong before that happens. So if you want to organize an event, do it. If you, want, if you see someone carrying stuff, help. You know, that, that's the sort of way to get involved. But in terms of the future, um, we already know that there's DC15 happening in Germany next year, and uh, if you are interested in getting involved, then uh, pop onto our channel, onto our mailing list, and just, you know, just idle. Have a look, maybe there's something you can pick up. And then beyond DC15, there's mm -hmm. DC16 and DC17, and, well, one of the greatest ways, to, I have to say, to get involved in DevConf is to become a volunteer by organizing a conference from the very <laughs> start on. So, um, if you are interested, or if you, you know, let's not say if you're interested, if you have this have an idea. potential spark in your head right now that says, yeah, you know, I could probably do this, and find some people in my town and find a venue and so on. I think you can. I think you can do it. Um, it's a lot of work, but um, if you start early and, uh, and you're committed to it, then you can do it. And I, at least for my part, I would be happy to chat with anyone uh, who has these ideas, who wants to uh, think about doing DEPCON 15, uh, 16, 18, 21, whatever. Um, and if you have any questions or unclarities about what's involved and how to start and this and that, then uh, find any one of us and, and talk to us because uh, this is a great time to form ideas and at the end of the week you would even get to present your idea. That's it from me. Yep. Does anyone else want to ask a question or say anything? Tell us what... Okay. Yeah. Well, I was just curious uh, who I would. Uh, hi, <laughs> Kathy. Uh, is it the video team that is doing the captions, the titling, subtitling? There is a separate. Well, I videos. There's a, there's a different group of people, um, which I th is. Does anyone know if Tassia is still is pushing that or someone else? Who is who's, who? Oh, sorry, sorry, I'm I'm misremembering entirely. I I don't know if anyone is taking care of that yet this year. I I had no. You did some subtitling before, didn't you, or not, or no, or am I just making that up? Uh, yeah. So can you say something about what, I know it's not the question, but can you say something about the subtitling? <laughs> How, because not, some people... How do you do the job? Uh, we can find out together, if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't remember what we used, but it was like two, two years ago that I helped Francesca. Yep. But uh, yeah, we can find out what the structure was and but I think I've, I've not heard of anyone doing this job yet this year. Mm -hmm. yes. Anything else from people or we just uh, come to a close? I think we can all go back to our RSC then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you for coming. I hope some of you will um, now actually have heard something interesting that you would like to um, volunteer for in DevConf, and that we will get some, see some new people helping in different ways. Um, I hope I haven't scared you all off. Thanks for coming anyway.
On the, on, at the front, if there's any particular session that you specifically want to, to, to help out on, um, just go and sign yourself on the sheet, decide what you want to do. Um, more importantly, even if you're coming into a talk, if you find that there's nobody stood by, a ca by either of the two cameras or whatever, um, just grab one or grab whoever's in the room and just say, yeah, I'm quite happy to, to do that. Um, Show the time to the speakers and give the microphone. 
Yeah, yeah. So running round, that's that's always always needed. So every talk's got a uh, forty-five minutes, I think. So we've got a ten minute, ten minute, five minutes, and you know, take them off, keep, drag them out the room, and or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter if it goes over for five minutes, but having the, having that five, fifteen minutes between talks. Uh, gives people who have volunteered chance to get to the talk that they wanted to attend next in bits and pieces, so uh, it, it helps. Do you know where the batteries are? No, I haven't seen any. I was about to come and ask you that question. Okay, thank you. <laughs> no problem. So, that's what's the law on the board? Okay. Really, I thought you dropped it. I think just 